Today I've got an iPad really damaged and will need to be replaced. There's two ways to go about this. Let me show you what those two ways are. The first thing that I need to do is get it on a heat plate. After a few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and take my ice-like Evo and stick it on the side and compress it. This will allow me to start to open up the iPad. I think it needs to warm up a little bit more, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I can now take a plastic piece and carefully use it to slice the adhesive as I leave the pressure in there. I'll go down both sides, the top and the bottom. This clamp is in the way, but it's a super convenient tool to have. I take that off and, and we'll keep some pressure on there as I slide the plastic down the side. I'm slicing that adhesive. I like to take my time with this. And then using a little heat and gravity, we'll let the iPad screen fall away. I'll then take out the two screws in the bracket. I cover up this connector and same for this one with those two connectors. Using a spudger or your fingernail, go ahead and disconnect it. we have that last little bit of adhesive that we need to separate on the final side of the iPad. You see how damaged this charge port is? We'll disconnect the, the screw for the battery and the two screws next to the charging port. We'll pull up this little spacer here. Pull off the sticker and pull out this connector. Disconnect the speaker, carefully add some isopropyl alcohol, and with my spudger, I'm gonna carefully get under the flex cable and pry it up. Now you can really see how damaged this charge port got. Leave in the comments, what do you think happened to this charge port? Using a bit of hot air with my tweezers, I'll go ahead and pop that off. You can see the pads are all still intact. And we'll compare it to a brand new one. I'm gonna add some flux, take some wick and my soldering iron and extract the solder that I don't want on the flex cable anymore. Being that this is a flex cable, I'm not too concerned about the temperature of the solder, but I'm gonna use my 183. This is a higher melting point solder. It's not the highest, but it is higher than your, your standard uh, low melt solder at 138. This will allow me to make sure I have a solid joint between all of the pins on the port and the flex cable itself, instead of using a weaker solder like 138. Go ahead and remove a new charge port from a new flex. And I did that using the same technique, a little bit of heat to the back of the flex. And I'll go in and gently touch the pins to kind of remove any excess solder uh, from the pins there. And we'll use some wick and I'll go around the edge and kind of suck up any of that low melt that was holding this frame onto the, uh, to the flex cable. I'll 
I'll take a clean room wipe and some isopropyl alcohol with my brush and we'll clean up that flex cable in, in preparation to receive some new flux and the new charge port. I've got it clamped down with my ceramic reverse tweezers on both sides, which allow me to heat it up and make sure it's got a nice solid solder joint under. This is a blind solder, similar to a Nintendo Switch charge port, where you kind of go in blind and you have to kind of rely on your knowledge of how to do this and this to make sure you've got all of those solder joints correct. I'm gonna go ahead and add some solder uh, to the legs and also around the charge port to kind of ground everything and keep everything nice and rigid. And there you go. A brand new charge port on the original flex. This is one method to be able to replace the charging port without having to extract the entire logic board, which can be time consuming, tedious, and, uh, and somewhat of annoying. And that is mangled. Before we connect anything, I'm gonna carefully pry up this part of the board with some isopropyl alcohol in my spudger and insert a piece of plastic to prevent the power from the battery going into the logic board while I connect the screen back up for testing. Make sure those all click in solidly. Now we can remove the plastic from our battery connector and screw it back into place. We'll put our new charge port in place and screw it down so that we can test it. Go ahead and plug it in and... Voila! Charging. That's what we want to see. I'm going to go ahead and give this cleaning and we'll let this charge up a little bit. Stay tuned for the video where I show this Apple Watch repair. You can see here when I uh, unplug it and plug it back in and let me plug it back in and boom charging or we can do it this way by replacing the entire flex cable let me know in the comments below which one you do after watching this video it's a little bit more tedious and time consuming but it's one other way to do it, which some might find easier. We'll go ahead and remove the charge port screws, the battery screw, and also the screws that cover up the brackets for the connectors for the display. Disconnecting the connectors with my fingernail or a spudger. Gotta build up on my thoughts sitting in an ashtray. I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient. Okay. You can disconnect everything again. I can see the way you look at me. I'm such a disgrace. I never really asked to be brought into this place. You want to love me? Well, then, baby, I have a taste. All the highs in the Now I've already got it on a heat mat, but adding a little bit of isopropyl alcohol will help it so that I can lift this board while we wait for the heat to do its thing. I'm going to remove other components that, that are in our way of removing the board. We've got a half a dozen connectors with some brackets up at the top that we need to disconnect, along with some coax cables for those antennas. I want to make sure you add plenty of isopropyl alcohol so that we don't accidentally tear this delicate flex cable. It makes, it makes its way over towards the camera. Carefully peel it away from the copper stickers. Up at the top. And then finally the board will come out. 
Now we can remove the sticker. It's covering up the solder joints. Add some flux. Now there's several methods to doing this, but here's the method that I like to use. I add some low melt solder to uh, each one of the pads on the charge board. And then using some hot air uh, at a high, a high temperature, I'll carefully go in and put a little tension on the flex cable and let that solder kind of mix with the lead free solder and help remove the flex cable from the board. You can do this with a soldering iron only, but it is somewhat tricky. Uh, as this board has some decent thermal mass behind it that sucks away the heat from the soldering iron. So I found that this method works best for me, at least in the extraction portion. Now we'll go ahead and add some flux and remove all of that solder, that mixture of solder that we've now made with the low melt and the uh, factory lead free solder. give it a good cleaning with some ipersopropyl alcohol, uh, my clean room wipe and brush until it's nice and polished clean so that we can add some more flux in preparation for it to receive the new charge port flux cable. We'll spread that out nice and evenly. Make sure we have enough flux to, to go around. I'm going to also add some of my 183, just like we did before on the charge port, uh, so that we can kind of fluff up those uh, pads with some nice solder pillows. And I'm going to carefully go over each one to ensure that we've got about the same amount of solder on, on each one of those pads. And I'm going to go over it until I'm satisfied. Now with some isopropyl alcohol and clean room wipe, I'll clean it up, add some more flux, take our new flux cable with flux on it as well. And you see these, these little windows with these little squares. We're gonna line those up with those gold squares on both sides by tacking one or two of the pads when I have it nice and centered. Once that's done, now I can go over each pad. I like to, t at least at the beginning, take tweezers, put some pressure on the flex cable to ensure that the flex cable is sitting as flush as possible against the board. And then I'll go over each one of the, the pads, pulling solder up and through that hole until I feel confident enough to add additional solder so that I know that there's a solid joint on every single pad. You don't understand the pain it brings. You don't ever want to give me wings. You don't ever want to set me free. And then I'll clean up all of the residual flux until it's nice, shiny, and clean so that the sticker will have a good, clean surface to stick to. Just like that. I got issues in my head. I like you in my bed, but you keep me on red. Oh, everything is like a test. I better not text or I'll come off desperate. All right, we've got the new charge port installed. Let's put that sticker back if we can. Well, this part is quite tedious, reinstalling the board with all of the different connectors, flex cables, brackets, and everything that needs to go back into place. Just make sure there isn't anything that you're missing. Quite a bit that folds over each other, through each other, around each other. You gotta make sure everything's put back correctly, otherwise once you have it closed, you may have to open it up again to connect that those or to check all of your connections. I'm the one who's always sorry the conclusion. Even though I offer all of the solutions. I wish you love me like I love you. It's stupid. And we'll go ahead and connect the connectors again, ensuring that each one of them gets a nice solid click. And it's all the way seated down. We can put our brackets back with the screws that correspond. Silhouettes of you are like a time. We'll pull out the plastic that we have protecting the battery connector this time and put back that final screw. You now plug it in and test it again as well. And here it comes on. You don't ever want to give me wings. And you can see it charges as well. As you can see, replacing the charge port is kind of complicated, but it's definitely not the hardest repair. 
But let me know in the comments below which of the two repairs you would do. Would you spend the time to solder on a new one or would you take the time to take the logic board all the way out and solder on a new flex cable? Both options work. I hope you've learned something. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.